In this recording, we look at an example of the step-by-step -step process of conducting a one-sample Z test for the mean and a one-sample test for the mean. Obviously, we're comparing means. In particular, it means we have a single sample where we're comparing its mean against some fixed number, which is a hypothesised population mean. And we use the Z test if we know the population standard deviation sigma. So let's look at an example. Here we're told that the weight of potato crisps per packet produced by a particular manufacturer is known to be normally distributed with a standard deviation of sigma equals 8 grams. And consumers complained that the customer was putting less crisps into the packets on average than the manufacturer's stated mean weight of 200 grams. So right away we're getting the clues here. We know the population standard deviation sigma and we also are clearly comparing means. So that's going to be some type of Z test. And in particular we have a fixed number, 200, and you'll notice from the next paragraph that we are indeed comparing the mean of a single sample against that number. In particular, we are told that a random sample of 16 packets of the crisps was obtained and it was found the mean weight for this packet of crisps in the sample was 194.5. So that will come in handy later. Sample mean X bar is 194.5. And we want to test the hypothesis that the true mean weight of crisps is less than the manufacturer's stated mean weight of 200 grams testing at the 5% level of significance. So first of all, we look at our hypotheses. And at this stage, in practice, we would not use even have access to sample data when setting up hypotheses. So the value of X bar that we happen to have access to will not come into this until we get on to doing the test statistic. For now, we're simply looking at the manufacturer's claim, which was that the mean weight was 200 grams while consumers are concerned the true mean is less than this. And H1, H0 is of the form mu equals 200 grams, while H1 is that the mean differs from that in the way suggested by the question. So in this case, because the specific concern as to whether the amount of crisps is lower than 200, H1 would be mu less than 200 in this particular case. The significance level is then the level of evidence we would require against H0 in order to be prepared to reject it. And here that is stated as 5%, so we write alpha equals 0.05. And we're then wanting to see where our sample mean would lie in the distribution of sample means that we would have if H0 was true. So this is where we calculate our test statistic, which is the difference between our observed sample mean X bar and the hypothesised population mean mu divided by the standard error. That is divided by sigma on the square root of the sample size. So here we saw that sample mean was 194.5. Hypothesised value of mu suggested by H0 was 200. Standard error, we had information about sigma if we look back at what we were given, we were told that that was 8 and the sample size n was 16 in this case. Therefore, this is divided by 8 on the square root of 16. And make sure when you're working this out, if you're doing it all in one step on a calculator, for instance, that you put brackets around the numerator expression and the denominator expression, or otherwise work out numerator first work out denominator first and then do that divided by that. Using any of these steps, in this case we find the test statistic Z is equal to negative 2.75 and this is also sometimes called Z calc because it's the actual value of Z that we have calculated. And one method of making a decision about H0 is to compare this calculated value of the test statistic with a critical value, where on one side of this critical value, in this case, since it was a one-tailed test, we would reject H0, while if it falls on the other side of this critical value, we would not reject H0. 
and for recordings on how to find this value, given the significance level, from inverse normal tables, we also have some stats casts on how to do that, that you might like to look at. But from here, we will just tell you that the critical value of Z works out to be negative 1.645. And so what is this telling us? Well, in the sampling distribution, the Z distribution, we compare these values of Z. And the critical value of Z on this very approximate diagram I've drawn is there. Now, in this case, we were specifically concerned with whether the manufacturer is putting less crisps into the packet than the stated mean. Therefore, if we find our Z statistic is below negative 1.645, in this hypothesis test, that will lead us to reject H0. That is a rejection region, in other words, in this standard normal distribution. Whereas if Z is any number greater than negative 1.645, we would retain H0. So let's have a look at our calculated Z value. And our calculated Z value is certainly below this. It's negative 2.75. So since in this case, it was a one-tailed test with H1 being mu less than some value and since in fact our calculated Z value is less than the critical value that will lead us to reject H0 in this example. And what does that tell us? Well it tells us that at the 5% level of significance we do have enough evidence to be convinced that the manufacturer's claim is false and that in fact they are putting a smaller number of crisps into the packets on average than their stated claim of 200. That is the difference between the observed sample mean of 194.5 and their hypothesised population mean of 200. That difference is more than could reasonably be attributed to sampling variability. That is, at the 5% level of significance, there is sufficient evidence to conclude the true mean weight of crisps per packet is less than the claimed amount of 200 grams. So this is an example of the step-by-step -step process for a one sample Z test. Starting with our hypotheses, taking note as we go of whether this is one-tailed or two-tailed, and in this case since H1 was mu less than 100 that made it a one-tailed test. Then working out our calculated value of the test statistic based on our sample data, comparing that with the critical value and then making a decision regarding the null hypothesis.